Hi friends! Welcome to this channel! My name is Nastya and I do software engineering. And in this video I wanted to share 5 things that helped me land my first job in tech without having an education in computer science or even in your local education in the United States. I just want to set the expectations clear from start. I am not gonna tell you the right or the best way to do things because I don't think there is one. Different things work for different people and in this video I wanted to share what have worked out pretty well for me to maybe inspire you and to give you some ideas for action. I majored in linguistics in 2019 in Moscow and soon after I decided to pivot to full-time software development. And my first role in tech was a Siri linguist slash web developer. So I got the job with Siri TTS team and I was building Siri voices and internal tools. So development took 50% of my time and the other half was more about computational linguistics. If you are curious about my journey into computational linguistics, I do have a separate video about that. The link will be here and in the description. And also I have a separate video about switching from linguistics to software development. If you are curious about this, the link will be in the description as well. I must admit, it wasn't that easy to switch from linguistics to programming and especially without a degree in computer science or even without any boot camps that can help you get employed uh, and without any local education. So it took me quite some time to find my first tech job, but I've learned a lot of things along the way that I wanted to share with you today. And now that I'm analyzing the whole job searching process, I think there are five major things that helped me get my first tech job. And it's having career strategy, applying for jobs consistently, building my network and optimizing LinkedIn profile, preparing for coding interviews, and continuous learning and improvement. Those are high level things. And now let's discuss each of them more in detail so you can understand what I mean by each of them. My career strategy definition, I think, is about the following four things. Knowing what you want, knowing what you already can do, knowing what you need to know, and knowing how to present all of it in a concise and thoughtful resume. So. My first step was to analyze my life and what I wanted to do with my career. Set a goal, an exact role within an exact industry, ideally, and in a specific country. So I wanted to search for roles, front-end engineer, front-end developer, or full-stack developer in the United States, ideally closer to educational technology or entertainment technology. I was also interested in machine learning and AI uh, and smaller businesses, e-commerce and agencies. So after I created this kind of goal and plan for myself, I decided to analyze each of those roles that I just mentioned. Uh, and to see what are some patterns, some commonly used keywords in those job descriptions. So I went to LinkedIn and other websites like Dice or other jobs aggregators, just any of them, and I analyzed around 20 job postings for each of those roles that I wanted to understand what are some common skills that they want or experience, background, and uh, responsibilities that they mention. After I did uh, the research of the market, it became easier for me to analyze my skills and my experience. And the goal of this analysis was to find my strong sides, like soft skills, hard skills, experience, relevant to the job. I highlight the word relevant and also analyze my weaknesses, things that I lacked, and to find strategies to somehow compensate my shortcomings or maybe find a way to improve my skills and learn things. And all of it leads to resume creation. I think it is highly important to create your resume thoughtfully. First, it must be relevant to the role. So I had 
three roles in mind, front-end developer, front-end engineer, and full-stack developer, well, and full-stack uh, engineer as well, which makes it fourth. And I created a separate resume for each of them. Even if the only difference between some of the roles was just, well, one word like front-end engineer or developer. It is often used interchangeably in many job postings. Sometimes they might be slightly different, but it depends. I used the same experience and skills in both of the resumes. The only difference was this keyword. Uh, in one I used developer, in the other one I used engineer. I also read this advice to use as many relevant keywords for the job postings as you can. And so if I found a job posting for a front-end developer, I would send the front-end developer resume that I had and a front-end engineer, uh, I sent the front-end engineer one. And another thing is that everything within the resume should be relevant to the particular role. Ideally, it should be using, again, as many keywords as they want you to use. You know, I was told so many times that on average it takes six seconds for recruiters to actually check your resume. So they are not going to read the whole thing, but whatever phrase they catch, it should sell you. So everything on your resume should have a purpose. I am definitely far from being a resume specialist, but after I set the call, researched the market, analyzed my skills, and used all of it to create a thoughtful resume, I really saw some changes. So I had been looking for a job and applying for jobs for five months without any success. I got some screen calls, two or three of them, and that was it. No one even invited me to an interview. And after I did all of this work, I started noticing that I was getting interview invitations, that I was passing screen calls, and I was actually getting more of those screen calls. That's why I think that those things were important on my journey, and they might be also important on yours. Next up on my list is to apply for jobs consistently. You know how they say that uh, getting a job is a numbers game. You cannot apply for five jobs, get five interviews, and uh, get all the five offers. You need to apply for more jobs to get a certain amount of interviews and eventually get a couple of offers. So applying every day was also something important that I did. First, I researched the platforms that I could use to apply. I knew about Indeed and Dice, uh, but I wanted to know if there were maybe more interesting platforms, and I found platforms like Hired, highly recommend, Angel's List, Underdog.io. Then I created profiles on each of them and uh, basically started applying. I also used LinkedIn quite a lot and I must say that optimizing my LinkedIn profile was also something crucial. And this is how a recruiter found me for the Siri voice building position that I eventually got. So optimizing LinkedIn, what exactly I mean by optimizing, it's filling your profile fully and utilizing your keywords uh, when doing so. So your keywords, the title that you want and the skills that are most common in the field need to be used in your profile summary, in your skills, in your experience, in your education. Uh, ideally, you should also have some people in your network who are also working in the same field and all of it is supposed to higher your chances of getting noticed when some technical recruiters look for people in your field or people with similar profiles to yours. Your LinkedIn optimization and building your LinkedIn network will probably not pay off right away. It's gonna take some time. That's why it is still important to apply for jobs every day. And don't get me wrong here. I think it is useful to apply every day or every other day, but it's it doesn't mean you need to apply mindlessly to just any job that you find on Indeed, Hired, or LinkedIn. I'd say there, there should be some middle ground between mindlessly applying to everything and being too picky about job postings 
and uh, companies. And now that we touched a little bit on building network and LinkedIn, let's keep talking about that. Building my network was also something important that I did, but it, it was also very confusing. So every other self-taught developer that I met told me that many of them got their first gig or job through network or also just many people on the internet, they say the same. For me, it was confusing because I just came to the new country and everything was closed here because of the coronavirus. And I didn't know how I can actually meet people. So I started researching the topic and I found quite a lot of online events and my favorite one was JS LA. You can go there for free and also there are online conferences you can visit and even online career fairs. So I went to one of those uh, and there were a lot of virtual rooms with recruiters from big tech companies and I got a chance to meet some people from, from those companies, to ask my questions and to get noticed a little bit, to add those people to my network and to even have some conversations with them. So going to online events is offline or online events is one thing you can do and then adding those people that you met to your LinkedIn profile and connecting to them and maybe having some conversations around things that um, you had in, in those events. Also, social media. Social media is quite powerful today. You can find your communities on Instagram, Twitter, Clubhouse, anywhere, and I would recommend to somehow get involved in those communities, maybe to create content with some people or just follow them and have discussions, conversations with them. And again, add them to your LinkedIn, try to stay connected professionally, I would say. And here, I think one of the most important things is to keep this genuine. Don't do this just to build your network, but Treat building your network as a way to learn from people, to learn about their experiences, about their skills, about their stories, because this is what's the most valuable. Don't treat people like ways to get to things and be genuine about learning about those people and from those people. Another thing you can do is to join a mentorship group and especially if you are looking for a coding job, there is a coding coach website that is very useful for finding a coach for free so you can be learning from your peers, you can even be building projects together with them that you can put onto, uh, in your resume and of course you can get career advice and encouragement. Honestly, I think this is exactly what kept me going in terms of coding. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that I had a major burnout when I was trying to learn some web technologies and having a group of people who had the same struggle was kind of uplifting. So I would definitely recommend. And that's also another way to network with other people. And I think it is especially valuable if you don't go to college and you cannot get the people who are going to be working in your field. And that's one of the ways that you can actually do it. Next thing, preparing for coding interviews. Yes, it was also frustrating for me to prepare for a coding interview, like it was something separate, not relevant to the job itself. I had this feeling quite often, that's why I was reluctant to solving those hackering challenges, but it ended up being helpful for some interviews, but also it was helpful in terms of learning a language. So it helped me to be a better problem solver. I learned how to divide a big problem into smaller chunks and how to approach different solutions uh, like gradually, uh, first with brute force solution and then improving along the way. Uh, but also it helped me to learn syntax better, to have better knowledge of JavaScript methods because I was learning JavaScript. So overall, let's say it is not as useless. I would definitely recommend hackering, lead code, or even better, Exorcism. Exorcism is a website also like with different languages, different tracks. And what's cool about this is you can actually get mentored. So when you're trying to solve something and you feel like you could do better, but you don't know how, you can get a mentor for free who will review and uh, your solution and guide you to a better one who will help you improve. So this is something I definitely encourage you to try. And if you are learning JavaScript, there is interview um, 
algorithms, JavaScript algorithms, Udemy course. It is simple, it is concise, and it is very helpful. I didn't have time to finish this before I got my job, but I found it very useful to practice those most common coding challenges. And I actually got asked one of them and I was able to solve it pretty quickly, which was cool. And also this cracking coding interview book that I'd say, well, it is not the source that you would want to use to learn things, uh, like algorithms or big O notation, but this is definitely something helpful to help to have to revise things, to solve a couple of challenges and to learn more about overall structure of interviews at different big tech companies. And of course, knowing fundamentals like algorithms, data structures, big O notation, I wouldn't say it was useful for each and every interviews. Some of my interviews were quite practical and I had React questions, so I had to build things and that was the best kind of interviews. But sometimes I did have to solve the algorithms, uh, algorithm challenges and to speak about big O notation. So it was nice to feel that I can address these kind of questions as well. If you want to learn more about algorithms, I would suggest you this playlist that I will I leave in the description. And also there is a book that I absolutely love. It's Grokking Algorithms. That is such an intuitive and easy to read book that yet helps you to understand some algorithms. Uh, I don't think they teach you how to implement them. They have pseudocode, I think, but trying to understand it first without implementation was also something useful to me. And finally, the last but not least is continuous learning and improvement. It is impossible to know it all in tech. There are so many things to learn. Uh, and I think tech is all about, especially coding jobs are all about figuring out things on the go. And it will be inevitable for you to learn things on the go. And especially because technology changes consistently, new libraries come and go, new versions of frameworks come and go. Uh, so you need to keep up with things and having growth mindset. It is something that can help you a lot and having the curiosity to learn things. And I also noticed that sometimes different companies and hiring managers are looking for those qualities in the candidates. They want to know that you are keeping up with things and learning something continuously. And that's all that I wanted to share with you. Hopefully my tips and tricks Things that I've learned will be helpful to you if you're looking for a job in tech. If you like content about tech, languages, life, make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video. And I will see you in the next one.